Valve recently released the OLED Steam Deck, and everybody loves it. It's very popular. People on YouTube keep praising it and saying how good it is and how that should be a deck you go for. But is it really? Because there's something that people keep overlooking, which is money, 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 money. And that is where this comes in. This is a refurbished 512GB LCD Steam Deck. Why is this a better deal? Why does this make sense? Or why is this a worthy contender? Because you're getting a Steam Deck that, yeah, it's worse than the OLED model in many ways, like battery life, but it's also 190 euros less than the cheapest OLED Steam Deck for the same storage. So it's a pretty significant cost difference. And Valve claims some very positive things about it. They say it's you know t tested very thoroughly. They say they test the display, the battery, the buttons, etc. And it should all be fully functional. It should be up to par. The condition they're expecting to get is maybe some scratches on the plastic, but the screen shouldn't have any scratches and everything should work. But does it hold up? So, so most likely your Steam Deck will come in this plain as cardboard box that is quite small compared to some stuff out there, like oftentimes I order something, the box is way too huge for no reason. But in this case, it's got a small box with the Steam Deck inside, with its case on, and then you also get charger. And the charger is just standard charger, it's nothing worth mentioning, it's in perfectly good condition in my case, and it works. Uh, the case has like this plastic wrapping that looks very stock, but it does say that it's uh, refurbished in it, but it's not like highlighted too much. And once you get that off, you actually notice that this is not a cheaper case, because all they mention on the website is that you get some case with every refurbished Steam Deck. But I'm relieved to find that actually when I opened this up, it came with the case that normally comes with the 512 gigabyte model. It isn't a cheaper case. And um, on the inside of the case, you'll find the Steam Deck. And uh, now you'll notice that it's probably in a good condition uh, on the base of this one sample size. Like mine is pretty much brand new, but you can probably tell if you look hard enough on the top that there is there are some minor scratches uh, next to charging port but they are like really hard to notice like i have to pull it close to my eyes and look really hard and i can see those scratches when i do that so it's really not even worth noting pretty much you also got a cleaning cloth that's not uh, very good but it's there like i would use a different microfiber cloth because different ones would be better. So pretty much it's an almost brand new Steam Deck, minor scratches that are really hard to see in the first place and that's the only damage. So at least in my case I'm very impressed and even if you have issues Valve would probably go ahead and replace it for you because there is a full one year warranty on one of these. So after unboxing, I plugged in the wall because you need to do that before booting a Steam Deck and then it booted just fine. It took a while to do so, but eventually it did. For some reason, it doesn't work in my 5GHz network. At least it didn't during setup, so I'm using my 2.4GHz one, but it seems to work fine and in my network it doesn't really matter, but it's worth noting. So currently I have this sort of desktop portable hybrid mode where i have it on the dock like this and then it connects over to my main desktop with the monitor i have also configured my keyboard and mouse to work with bluetooth if i change their modes and um, there's a speaker and then the other side of the speaker which are going to monitor and work like that so far i have matched up some games i have managed to install emudeck with some emulators and games and it all works out fine. The emu deck thing is a bit of a pain, uh, but they do have uh, decently good guide videos on how to do it. And uh, it's able to run not like super demanding stuff, but uh, for portable use like this, it's great. Uh, the battery life seems to be good enough and it can run like my Wii and uh, uh, even some Switch games fine. Like it runs Mario Kart 8, okay. 
But like, for example, Super Mario Wonder, which is very new, uh, that's not trying to be a lot of effort, it, though it does run fine on my PC. So it's not perfect, but it runs quite well, it is perfectly good, and you can also like limit the TDP uh, depending on the game you're running. And it's also a really good form factor for playing Geometry Dash. Like, the portable thing, but with the physical buttons, it's great for Geometry Dash. I highly recommend that, just from the perspective of it being fun to play. There is some weird stuff though, like for example, by default it only actually does like 800 or 720p uh, on my main uh, 1080p display. Uh, and the change that I actually have to first of all go to settings and change it to 1080p, 240Hz. And then if I want to actually run the resolution in a game, I have to for every game individually uh, set the resolution to be allowed to be higher. Uh, because by default it only does the inbuilt display, even if you're using an external one, when you're running game mode. But I'll be uploading a video on how to do that uh, soon, because it is a very simple and quick process, actually. Additionally, the desktop KDE seems to have some weird-ass bugs with scaling, like it is just kind of weird, ugly, like, uh, artifact when I'm running it on my main screen. Does not happen in, like, handheld monitor but on my main monitor it is like weird ass like being like distortion effect on top of it i assume it's scaling something somehow badly i don't know either way it's not really any good i don't know why if it's the steam game scoping or if it's kd uh, who knows but just good to know that there is an issue there as well also, there was a bit of an annoying bug where if I put the thing to sleep, uh, it would like disconnect my Xbox controller uh, through USB and I would have to restart to be able to do it again. But they actually released an update yesterday that totally fixed that issue, so uh, that's very good. 